So one of the things we now will move to here is talking about substitutes. Now, this is a little harder to motivate remotely here, but I'll, I can explain what I would do in person. So this lecture would normally start off with me auctioning off a couple bars of chocolate. Bring in some chocolate, hold them up and say, anybody like chocolate? And who wants one of these? And most of the hands would go up. It's okay. Well, I only have two of them, so I need to figure out some way to decide who gets them. Now, as we already talked about, we could do that based on willingness to pay, right? Money. But I said, ah, I don't want to do that. Let's, let's, let's do willingness to pay in how long you're going to hold your breath for. So, so how many of you want a bar of chocolate, one of these, and if, you have to, if I make you hold your breath for 10 seconds? And, you know, most of, maybe somebody's hand would go down, but most of them stay up. So then we go through this. I keep raising the amount of time. And what happens as I do that? Any guesses? I'm get, I suspect you have some guesses there. As I increase the cost, in terms of making people hold their breath for a little longer, we get fewer and fewer people willing to hold their breath. So usually if we get down to maybe four people, then I have them come up, hold their breath, say whoever holds their breath the longest gets a bar of chocolate, right? And then they everybody sits down. So it's it's oftentimes... A nice example, something a little different. But what that illustrates is that as we increase the cost of something, we end up with a lower quantity. Alternately, if we reduce the cost, we have a higher quantity that people want. So we talk a lot in our lives about necessity need. We say things like, you know, Montana is going to need 30%, Billings is going to need 30% more water by 2025. Don't know if that's at all true. Or we need more bike paths in Billings. Or MSUB needs better professors. Or I need to get into principles of micro, right? All of these things we talk about, we talk about necessity or need. We'll come back to this cost thing, by the way. We'll get more specific. The truth is, however, substitutes exist for, hmm, I'm going to be pretty, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to be bold. I'm going to say substitutes exist for everything. Now, they may not be perfect substitutes, right? When we think of substitutes, we tend to think, you know, Coke and Pepsi. Or we think, right, um, sparkling water or still water, right? Those are substitutes, but it turns out there are substitutes for everything, including water. What's a substitute for water? Okay, Coke. Well, you know, what's a substitute for food? Well, surely you, right? We're going to die if we don't have food. Well, true. But it turns out, what's a substitute for water? There's no substitutes for water. You, you can go a lot longer without eating than without drinking, so surely there's even fewer substitutes for water than there is for food. I don't think that's true. But maybe, let's, think, let's go all the way to the extreme. Let's look at air. There's no substitute for air, right? If we don't, if we don't breathe, we will die. That's true. But what's a substitute for air? In my on-site classes, I'm able to demonstrate that chocolate is a substitute for air. People were willing to give up air, breathing, in exchange for a bar of chocolate. It's strange. It's true. Substitutes exist for everything. There's no substitute for love. Well, is that true? When classes start back up in the fall, many students who take classes on site leave their family. And my get right? They're... They leave the loving embrace of their family, which means, what's a substitute for love? Economics, right? My guess is those of you who are watching these videos are taking time away from friends and loved ones to watch and learn, hopefully. 
right? So what's a substitute for love and affection? Economics. Turns out that anything can be a substitute for anything else, which is strange. We're going to need to add a little extension here so that it makes sense because, yeah, it seems weird. That's not the way we think about the world. It's true, but it's not the way we think about the world. So, let's talk here about sort of our first real tool, which is our concept of demand. Our concept of demand is going to be that there is some relationship between cost and 